big time for James Armstrong. Alabama is in the white kits. It is maroon and white for Mississippi State. Ashton Sarepka gets us underway. Second half of the quarterfinals in Pensacola. So glad you're with us, Alex Perlman, and Carrie with you tonight for this one, as well as the 4-5 game to decide all of the semifinal teams. The final one is either Arkansas or Vanderbilt. Made a big game from Haley McWhorter as well, wearing number six in maroon for Mississippi State. Alabama 17-1-1, went a perfect 10-0 in the SEC. And they are the outright champions for the first time in program history. One loss this year in the second game of this season at Miami. Other than that, it's been perfect. You can see Alex, we were, we were talking about the formation in the beginning and looking at Mississippi State in a four. And he said they're actually going to be a five. And you can see their two midfielders dropping back into those areas to play a little bit defensively to try to hopefully catch Alabama on the break. And good to see Riley Parker back in there as well because she sat at Auburn in the regular season finale, picked up a bit of a knock, but thankfully fit enough to be here in the quarterfinals. Mississippi State obviously has an enormous challenge taking on a team in Alabama that hasn't lost in the SEC, but how do they get a win if they can? I think, as you mentioned, they need to be defensively organized. You saw that with their shape with a three back when it looks on paper. That will become a five. And then they need to be clinical with their opportunities. You said they went through a double overtime against Texas A&M. They're going to be tired, tired legs. So when those opportunities come, they need to make sure to take them, put the ball in the back of the net. One of the more interesting strategies to watch is for Mississippi State. Since they are going to be playing so deep, you feel like to deal with that Alabama attack of Sarepka eventually once Paul gets in there, Tanner, Parker, how much can they go forward? How much can they try to squeeze out a goal? But they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna have to rely more on Maggie Wadsworth to hold up the ball. So when they get the opportunity to clear their lines, she has to hold on to it and invite her midfield to come and join her and help her and try and get into Alabama's final third. Free kick coming now for Alabama. Tripped up by Olivia Simpson, the 5'1 junior from Kingland, Georgia. And then you can see that it, it, it's a foul for sure. Um, but they've been told, make sure you're keeping tight on, on Riley Parker and don't give her an inch. And so hopefully they don't take it too literal and it re results on an early card and an opportunity to serve the box. Felicia Knox does just that, though, right into the chest of KK Pavad. It'll be throw in Alabama. It's your number eight for Wes Hart as he continues to grow this program into what is becoming a powerhouse. It certainly is this season. And you would imagine if they're able to run through this tournament, it's a guaranteed number one seed. They'll be hosting in Tuscaloosa throughout their run in the NCAA tournament until, who knows, maybe a potential college cup. And that's what he was looking for. He's looking for that number one seed so that they do not have to go to a place like a Florida State, etc. They want to be at home. It's, it's such a difference sleeping in your own bed and playing in your home field. It's a huge advantage. Alabama clearly the favorite coming in. What do they have to do to take care of business? I think they need to continue that momentum. As you said, they've gone unbeaten in conference. At like 10-0, it's huge feat. Um, it's special teams that do it. And I think with... With the injuries, etc., that Mississippi State have, they have got to use their bench. You know, get the, get the minutes in, get into a lead, protect that lead, get the key players off the field. Can they finish the game with their second string? And as we said, their second string are legit. So the subs that he's taken off the bench are nearly the same quality of what he starts in the first 11. So using that bench, not getting as many minutes in, in the legs is key for this game. Well deserved and an easy choice for 2022 SEC Coach of the Year in West Hart. I know when you were in Kentucky, he's always been someone that, that has been respected in this league and it's excellent that the administration last year, you know, who knows if he doesn't make the NCAA tournament, what ends up happening, they gave him the confidence, they gave him the boost and I mean, he is more than being well rewarded at this point. Yeah, they had the belief. Spoke to him in, in, in the end of November and again, didn't know, oh, am I going to be extended, etc. I'm, I'm so happy for Wes. Him and his staff have worked their tails off. And 
the products on the field right now, look where they're at. As you said, 10 and 0 in conference. Special teams do that, and hopefully they do get that one seed and have a, a long journey in the NCAA's. As you see, the ball played out wide. <laughs> you know, there, again, there's no love lost there, it's, it, but it, it's a great tackle. It's a great tackle, and that's what you expect from your outside back. Like Ray is a special, special player, and we said defensively and offensively. That's why that's why she's defensive SEC Player of the Year. She can do it on both ends of the field. Ray has already four caps for the Mexican senior national team as well, including two against the U.S. It's called into three Mexican national team camps in the last year, but was injured for the final two. So. And Wes Hart also telling us he just hopes that doesn't stall her development and her spot right now in terms of international soccer. No, I don't think it will. Alabama are on the crest of a wave right now, and all this success is going to be, everyone's going to see it, and they're going to see how good she is. A steer. Brooke Steer has had a terrific sophomore season. Started the last 13 games. Just here at the right center back position, wearing number three in white. And there's Reyes winning it away. Vital stop by Simpson. And instead, it ends up being a free kick for Alabama. How often do you see a right back score six goals? That's that's a special piece. But again, it's the formation and how they play. He allows his full backs to get forward. So she's always going to be that threat in the final third. Skorka feeds the middle of the box, looking for Sarepka, and no problems for Matt Titus. Not tested there, she will be, and she's going to have to come up enormous. Titus with a career-high nine saves in their first round win over Texas A&M in overtime. As you said, those nine saves is the reason that Mississippi State are on this field today. Forget about the quality of the goals that were scored, right? especially the second one, but those saves that she made just, just took, took it to another level. Mississippi State so far plugging up the middle pretty well. You just have to be really careful when you're passing towards the middle of the field because it can get picked off just like this by Cat Rogers. Grad student out of Prosper, Texas, who is getting the nod. Wes Hart bringing Gianna Paul off of the bench, the SEC freshman of the year, because he cheekily said, I like to bring her off the bench. Well, when you've got somebody of that quality that brings in the athleticism and you can take her off the bench at a certain time and when they made some tired legs, that's huge. Here's Wadsworth off of the feed from McWhorter, and that one sails wide. So Mississippi State's first opportunity on goal, trying to test McKinley Crone, grad student from Maitland, Florida. 414 career saves right now, fourth among most active goalkeepers. As you see James Armstrong, who is now in his fourth season in Starkville, native of Yorkshire, England, who talked about program transformations. It's happened pretty quickly for James Armstrong. Some very, very good recruiting, both as freshmen and transfers, that again has elevated this program into a, a spot where they've never been before. Uh, but it comes from building a great culture and having a great staff that all complement each other. And you can see that trans, it translates, transfers itself onto the field. Parker sees some space, takes it. Skorka coming forward out of the back, back to Parker and just didn't get what she wanted on it. Had space. Yeah, that, that's not, you don't want to see Mississippi State back and off and back and off and allowing those shots to get off. Mummer, you see your number 18 is playing on the right side of that three back in this match. She had the first goal for Mississippi State in the 38th minute. That was back in the first round on Sunday night. Here's Riley Tanner. Cutting byline. Flips it back. That's Sarepka. Has to track back. Long range effort right into Titus' breadbasket. No problem. And that's not that's what you don't want to see if you're in Mississippi State. You can see the first effort, a little bit of a combination. Parker gets it onto her left foot, but they're dropping, 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 and leaving that space in front of their 18-yard box. They need to close down that space and make sure that she one, she can't combine, and two, she cannot get the shot off. If you close it down, how much more susceptible does that make you to them trying to get the ball behind? 
if you've done your if you if you've done great question if you've done your homework right and you're you're pinched in nice and tight, then it ain't it, it's not going to really matter. Here's Sarepka one more time. Has some help from Cat Rogers coming up and just cleared out of bounds nicely by Pavat. KK Pavat, the two-time Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year. But yeah, you can see that once you step up and take out that space, Danny slipped the ball, you're relying on your goalkeeper then to come in. And that's what she did against in the second half of Texas A&M, being quick off her line and taking that ball in that space. Alabama looking to combine. Parker holds up play. Rogers. Beautiful day down on the beach here in Pensacola. What about a high of 75? Sunny weather, barely a breeze. Tonight we've got Vanderbilt and Arkansas, the 5-4 matchup coming up after this. And then both of those teams fighting for the final semifinal spot. And Sunday afternoon is the championship in Pensacola. The first time that we get to say that after 18 straight years in Orange Beach. City has been a tremendous host. Capacity was 2,500 during the first round. Well, they got so loaded in terms of attendance that they had to bring in more bleachers today, as well as encouraging fans to bring in their lawn chairs. And I was told that there are a lot of youth soccer teams that are coming in. This crowd's already amazing. Imagine by once we get into the second half of this game and then the following one with Vandy and Arkansas, it's going to be absolutely off the hook. This whole bracket has been unbelievable. Like this whole 1 to 10 has provided us with some really, really good games, some great finishes, some good goals, some great saves. No wonder the crowd want to come out and watch the SEC tournament here. Macy Clem commits the infraction. Our referee today is Corey Rockwell, who is the 2022 MLS Assistant Referee of the Year, and he has plenty of international experience as well over the World Cup in 2018 in Russia. So I don't think either coach is going to have much to complain about with the, the quality of officiating that we're about to have. You know, when I was at Kentucky, I think I had a couple of words with him myself, and it was not, not because it was bad officiating. He just wanted to get a call for you, right? No, fantastic referee. Love, love having, loved having them in the complex and really control the game. And I had a great rapport with, had a great rapport with the girls. Um, and also, you didn't know he was on the field. He just let the game flow. So I love that with an official. Free kick for Riley Combs, who was injured in their game against Alabama when Mississippi State matched up against the Crimson Tide a couple of weeks ago, but was back the next game against Vanderbilt for a team that cannot lose anybody else. And I do not say that lightly with the type of players that they are missing here today. Here's Pavad, shielded by Skorka. Pavad looking to reverse. Out of bounds for an Alabama throw in. Here's Felicia Knox, 15 assists this season, which leads the country. Sarepka, plenty of space, slots it back to Parker. One more touch, back it goes to Sarepka. Textbook Crimson Tide Soccer. If you watch that back, I want to see that right away in the replay. That's, that, that, is, that is, as you said, textbook, but straight from the training field. We've seen them yesterday. The combination play, a great ball, a dummy back. Top of the 18 yard box. Like you can see this, Riley Parker, great run, takes the center back with her, balls played, turn it to finish into the bottom corner. Like you can't ask for any more. Like that, Sarepka, great, cool, calm in front of goal, buries it into the corner. Tight is in no chance. Ashlyn Sarepka, who has now three goals in her last five games, a transfer from Virginia, came in before last year. And she has fit the culture that Wes Hart has established at, at Alabama. He's mostly getting it done with players that are two-star recruits, not heralded coming out of high school. And he's really proud of the way that he's built his program.
speak with him, yes. He, he, he speaks very highly of the players that he has and the buy-in that they got and how they went about recruiting. And he's very honest. He said, like, back in the day, national team players, do you want to come to Alabama? And it was like, no, like, you're not winning. Or Alabama is not a program that's up there, etc. And he's gone now and built it with the blue collar. Granted, he's, he's made some really good business in the transfer market, with Sarepka being one of them, and now the ball's in the back of the net. So he's done his homework and he's done his business really, really well. And I'll, there'll be players watching this game now saying, hey, I want to go and play for West Hart and I want to go and play for Alabama. This program is on the up. So Sarepka with her seventh goal of the season, 20th for her career, including her time with the Cavaliers in the 14th minute and the assist to Riley Parker. Not only does she have 12 goals now, she has six helpers as well. What a turnaround. Even though Wes Hart's Alabama Crimson Tide did make the NCAA tournament last season, the defensive numbers are up. The yeah. goals, the offense, everything has clicked this season. He speaks a highly of Crone, Clem. Uh, he, he, he can name, he can go through his whole team. Everybody defensively has stood up and been up for the challenge and when you're looking to build a team yes you want to you have to score to, to, to win games but when you're not conceding that's everything that you ask for Tanner another terrific transfer she came over from South Carolina a huge pickup as well Golden. three straight matches yeah a huge pickup that goal she scored against Auburn to to win that iron ball in the 87 87 they didn't give up they did not give up and i think auburn that game against auburn that's probably the best team performance against alabama i believe all year even though auburn haven't made the top 10 to get in here that was that that, that performance was again one of the best i've seen of a team in the, in the conference At this point, how difficult a task is it for the Bulldogs? It's an uphill battle, for sure. Uh, but I'm, I'm very interested watching Titus in goal right now. Over the last number of minutes, she has not stopped talking to her back line. She has not stopped talking to her midfield, encouraging them, pushing them on. Like she could have shut down. You can see the goal, and all of a sudden, oh, here we're playing against the number one seed, and let's just down tools and give up. But she is encouraging and driving driving her team on so that's that's really good to see that's really really good to see and as you said it's an uphill battle but you've got to have the belief and they've had the belief all year they go in behind almost got to tanner but broken up by Madison Cotta, who's playing major minutes now with all the injuries for Mississippi State. Well, on the lower part of the bracket, we see the winner of Alabama, Mississippi State, advances to the semifinals to take on whoever comes out of Arkansas and Vanderbilt, which is our fourth and final match of quarterfinal Tuesday. What a day it has been here at the Aston Brosnahan Soccer Complex. Here's Wadsworth. She could equalize all by herself. Cut out by Skorka. They'll need a big performance from Wadsworth, the SEC Freshman of the Year. She, she does really well um, all throughout the season. Like as you know, James, Armstrong, James, James Armstrong cannot speak higher of her, her work rate on and off the ball, who she is, a, who she is as a player. We didn't see a lot of her, and then against Texas A&M, and then all of a sudden she gets in behind, and plays a wonderful ball, and they win two one. So. They're going to look for her to get into those spaces, create some problems, try and put the ball in the back of the net because she can't. Olivia Simpson wins away the foul for Mississippi State. The Bulldogs injury list. I mean, it is it is a walking wounded in terms of the roster. They lost Andrea Tyrell in the sixth game. Ali Perry was hurt at the end of August. Tyrell, by the way, was second team all SEC last year. Miranda Carrasco is out for the year. She was hurt against Texas A&M. She's a 59 game starter. El McCaslin would have been in the starting lineup. And just, I mean, the biggest blow, I think, mentally for them. 
against Texas A&M with Olivia Buxton, the freshman that, I mean, James Armstrong could not say too many nice words about. He could have talked about her all night. She's not in the lineup either. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult, to say, especially when they're going up against the talent of what we see. Flip back. Riley Tanner on her left. It's oh, time for the go, Fakers tip. There you save. go, Titus. That's what you need. Yeah, absolutely. The, her confidence now is going to continue to build and build and build. You said they're going to they're going to get shots off. Alabama are going to get shots off. And when she makes big saves like that, it's huge. You can see the ball gets played out. Comes to Riley Tanner from 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 Riley Mattingly, and you can see the footwork, fantastic, great. She covers her cup post, covers her angle, and she she makes the save look easy. Puts it by the post. Great, great strong hand. Corner flip to the back post. Again, you can hear her talking. She's tell, she's organizing. She's telling her players what to do. Played back out wide to Cat Rogers, one of the captains. Nice service into the box to Reyes. Sarepka pushed down in the box, and Corey Rockwell lets it go. That's a close one. Ooh, that could have gone either. Yeah, way. that's a close, close call. If I'm if I'm Wes Hart, I'm I'm screaming for that penalty because again, she protected the ball. She brought the ball down really, really well. Smart, smart player. And I think there was enough contact on that that and enough. Another day, another referee could have given the penalty. Tanner 1v1 on Alyssa Delois, one of the captains for Mississippi State. As you see, the ball comes at her. She's so smart, right? She protects it. She knows there's some somebody coming on her back, and you know, I think she's got a really good call there for a penalty. She, I think Mississippi State Bulldogs got away with that one. Maybe one saving grace for Gwen Mummer. It wasn't an all-out push. It was more of an arm bar than an arm extension, and maybe that's what Corey Rockwell saw. Right, and he might have seen maybe she's not in full control of the ball. Like he's got the experience, right? He's got the experience, so you got to give him the benefit of doubt. But us seeing the replay then again, you're, you're asking those questions. Parker with the double team quickly coming back. It goes to Sarepka, fires high. Riley Parker obviously changes this offense. She wasn't in there against Auburn. It really didn't click, and, and it took a beautiful pass to the head of Riley Tanner just to be able to get that win and get that perfect season. It's the hold-up play, right? That, yeah. That's what makes the difference. Yeah, she changes this team totally. When she's on the field, they can go and drive a ball at pace, and it sticks to her like Velcro. Then she invites the players underneath her. Ball gets played out to Riley Tanner, Left foot, great delivery, balls in the back of the net from Sarepka. So you can see the what she brings to this Alabama forward line. That's why she's won all these accolades all year long. Like it's, it's, it's not by pure luck. This is a talented young woman and if I'm an NWSL side looking at the future, this is somebody that's on my radar. Parker who missed all of last season with a torn ACL or who knows what the Crimson Tide would have done last year uh, it might have been a very different story yeah I, and again like you hate seeing an injury with anybody and keeping them out for that period of time but she's came back stronger mentally stronger physically stronger and with that grit and determination that she just wants to win everything she just wants to be that superstar on this team but also helping our teammates achieve everything that they want to achieve as a total program Alabama executing the game plan right now. Seven shots to Mississippi State's two. Six in the last four minutes. And one of the reasons that Parker came back for her fifth season is because she wanted to fulfill the commitment that she made to West Hart when she committed. Win a championship. They've already won one. They could very well get another one here on Sunday if they're able to continue to win. And of course, the first step is advancing past Mississippi State and then potentially holding up a college cup. That's the culture, right? That's the culture that he is building. Somebody wants wants to come back, right? Uh, and where, where, where would the program be without her and her firepower this year? 
And she's helped other players grow also. She's not just scoring goals, she's creating assists. She's helped Jana Paul when Jana Paul's on the field. Like, I'm looking forward when she comes on, when she adds the athleticism and the wheels up front. She does just seem to make everybody better. And so I, I would say, I would venture to say, excluding the tour in ACL, and we were talking to her yesterday as well as a little bit today, this last year might have been one of the better ones of her life. You know, getting married, coming back from a torn ACL to being named the SEC Offensive Player of the Year, to completing a perfect season with Alabama and the SEC. It has not been a bad 2022. No, and can I just add to that? When we spoke to her yesterday, she is one of the most humble young women you could ever meet. For everything that she has done and achieved this year, she would talk to you like you, you are her best friend, regardless of who you are. So. I, I, I really enjoyed the time we spent with her yesterday, and again, I go back to she deserves everything that she's that, that she's been awarded and that she's achieved this year. Alabama has been loose, but they have also been focused. It just seems like they have the confidence and they have the ability to toe the line of having fun, but also being really serious about the goals at hand. Knox. Played into Sarepka. Sarepka cuts it back. 1v1 on Titus. What a vital stop by Simpson. I mean, you're going to need those types of efforts to beat Alabama. That doesn't help, though. Ray is drawn down in the box. Penalty. Crimson Tide. James Armstrong is going to be really disappointed. You'll see that. We got the replay. You'll see the tackle, right? So Sarepka cuts inside. Great foot block. But don't clear the, don't clear the 18-yard box put themselves under trouble and then we give away a PK. They had two or three opportunities on that first touch to clear the 18-yard box. Just kick it, kick it over, the, kick it into the stands, kick it anywhere. But not clearing the 18-yard box now gives Alabama the opportunity to go 2-0 up. Reyes has attempted one and she has been successful that time this year. Reyes to give Alabama a massive 2-0 lead. Reyes oh. comes up huge. Oh. We might be remembering that one in Starkville for a long time. Oh, what a save. What a save. Now, I'm going to give credit to the goalkeeping staff at, at Mississippi State right now because the last penalty that she took, I'm 100% sure she put it down that side as well. So Titus would have done her homework. Maybe if you look at her water bottle at the side of the goal, she might even have it. Reina Reyes penalty down to my left hand side makes a wonderful save push it. Hey, she is keeping this team in games. Did it against AM and is now holding it at 1-0 here against Alabama. First subs, Wes Hart saying that's enough. I'm gonna bring in the SEC freshman of the year as Gianna Paul checks in for Tad Rogers. And Olivia Simpson will head off. And this is Mac Titus, who is the backup on this team. Yeah. Maddie Anderson, the sophomore goalkeeper, junior goalkeeper, that is, is out injured. Maybe back for the NCAA tournament. We'll see. That is going to give a ton of confidence to this back line here for Mississippi State. That's what makes it more special, is that everybody's expecting Maddie Anderson. I mean, when she goes down against South Carolina in the second minute, She's giving up 0.3 goals per game. That's the lowest in the country. And then Mac Titus comes in and with a depleted roster is able to keep her team in games and potentially secure an NCAA tournament bid. We spoke about Maddie Anderson all the way through the season in our halftime shows. She was making save after save, keeping Mississippi State in games, winning games by the big saves that she was making. And then unfortunately gets injured and gives Titus the opportunity to step up. But I can tell you, Titus is getting great advice every single day from Anderson as Titus is coming in as an inexperienced goalkeeper in this league, and she's come off big. Like, credit to Titus. Like, that was a wonderful save. Out of bounds over the end line. Goal kick for Titus and Mississippi State. Maddie Anderson just has to play the role of cheerleader, teammate, and mentor. Started the first 13 games. Then hurt against South Carolina, out ever since. And for Titus, James Armstrong said, you know, we're not trying to overload her with knowledge. We're just trying to give her the confidence that she needs to play unencumbered. And the best confidence she can get is learning on the job. 
and the saves again we go back to the AM game the saves that she made and the saves that she's made so far tonight that confidence is growing and growing and growing by the minute Here's a look at Saturday's Week 10 SEC Network College football lineup. First, it's Kentucky taking on Missouri, noon Eastern, and then Arkansas hosts number 23, Liberty. That's at 4 Eastern, 3 Central in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Has Spencer Rattler and South Carolina squaring off against Vanderbilt. I would say that move from Oklahoma worked out for Mr. Rattler. All three games also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. We think if anything, Mississippi State would have some confidence heading into this match after securing their first ever program SEC tournament win. I was going to get some, I would imagine, from this free kick coming up on Sarepka. What a moment. It was when that ball went in off Gongo's head, you could feel the weight just lifting. I mean, I don't know if you could feel it all the way from Starkville, but you could feel it from the fans that were here in Pensacola. Yeah, everyone just erupted right in front of us. And we, we, we had the Mississippi State crowd like literally right in front of us. And it, it's huge. Getting that first, it, it is. It's, it, getting that first win is massive. And to do it beating like a powerhouse like Texas A&M, that, that is even bigger. Uh, and, and it grows confidence. Here's Taylor James. Back to the middle. Just a little bit too far the run from McWhorter. And Taylor James, someone who does not play a lot of minutes. Redshirted her freshman year, didn't play as a sophomore, but gave them some good ones. 25 in the first round win over Texas A&M. And we go back to the keys of the game from Mississippi State, the clinical and set pieces. That was a great ball served into the box. Good flick on, cross ball, and just very unlucky to let it go by the post. Here's the SEC Freshman of the Year, Gianna Paul. All the way from Long Island, New York, Huntington Station, where she grew up. Tracking back on Macy Hodge, now putting Titus under a bit of pressure. Here's Clem, one of the most underrated players on this team at holding mid. The best sixes in the country, Paul. And it's going to be a corner kick here for Alabama. Well, here's what we're talking about on Sunday night. I mean, you could just see. I mean, Mac Titus deserves all of the congratulations that she got. Yeah, I think everybody going back to the hotel, if, if it was cookies or whatever she wanted, they're buying them because she's the one that kept them in the game. Uh, she's I'm, a sweet I'm, tooth. I would go for some ice cream. Uh, yes, now we're talking. But <laughs> you're, you're like, she's growing and growing and growing in confidence. You can see her now in this corner organizing. Uh, she, she, is, she is turned into being the surprise package for, 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 for this whole tournament. Third corner goes begging for Alabama. I like it. She's playing with a smile on her face as well. And that's, that's just showing you that's where the confidence is coming from. Did you ever as a player get pressed into that situation where you know someone who's the starter goes out and the backup doesn't have a lot of experience and they have to learn under fire like this? Yeah, I did it myself. <laughs> it was like, you know, when you're a young guy growing up in Ireland and stuff and you, you, the structure wasn't great, you know, giving away my age right now, and you're playing on an older adult team or whatever, and you end up, you know, the senior guy, you know, the father figure gets, gets injured and you get thrown in at the deep end. And, and that's where I go back to the piece. Like, Mac Titus has grown over the last number of games, right? She's been put in at the deep end. There's where your belief, and that's how you're, you're getting better and better and better after every single game. And it's just like somebody taking a chance on you. And I was blessed. It happened to me. Somebody took a chance and, you know, was very grateful to do what I did. And she's getting a chance right now. So is Riley Parker. Back to her favorite right foot. 
And took a deflection for an Alabama corner. Difference in this match, Ashland Sarepka's goal in the 14th minute. Mac Titus saved Arena Reyes PK a little bit later on. Or else it could very easily be 2-0 and the Crimson Tide could be on their way to win number 18 on the year. Felicia Knox again for the numbers towards the back post. That's where most of the Alabama players are gathering. And that's where the ball goes. It goes through Titus's hands. Is it saved off the line or is it in? It's a goal. It go. Alabama leads it 2-0. Just trickled in after Titus touched it. And we're going to take a look at this. Corey Rockwell does have video review at his disposal. And so why not? Let's see exactly what happened. Hopefully we have a good angle of it. Yeah, hope so. We should hope you get to see this before before he does so we get we, we get a look and you can see it, it was a great delivery and you, as you said it there was numbers at the back post Titus gets lost the ball that's Clem that, right there yeah, as Deloitte Clem tries looks, to clear it off the line this, this will be the angle that we this need to see it. Clem gets a touch I think yeah that's th a goal I think it crossed the white line yep. yeah, it, yeah it's a little bit hard from that angle but here we go, this is even better. Yeah, that's yeah, a goal. All the ball is over the line. And again, unfortunately, Titus gets Titus gets caught out with the ball served into the box. Doesn't make the clean save, doesn't get the touch. And Clem gets the opportunity to toe poke it into the back of the net. It should be just Macy Clem's fourth goal of this season. And it's not pretty, right? But Wes Hart is not going to care as long as the ball is in the back of the net. And, you know, sometimes goals aren't pretty, uh, but, it, but they all count. So this should be Alabama 2 nothing up right now. And that angle, we believe, we believe yeah. clearly shows. And remember, it has to be indisputable video evidence in order to overturn the call. And the video does confirm Alabama to Mississippi State nil. What's most interesting about that, and I know Wes Hart doesn't care at all, that is the most un-Alabama goal maybe that we've seen all season. They're usually so pretty. They're perfect combination play in the box. Daggers from outside. Yep. And that was just a little toe poke over the line. It lawn. was, but you're looking at the smile on Macy Clem's face. You said it wasn't pretty. It counts. And she's a happy young lady that's put Alabama 2 nothing up. Sasha Picker gets the assist. And so now it's like climbing Mount Everest for Mississippi State. And it's a little bit of a different situation than we saw even in the 4-1 win for Alabama over the Bulldogs in the only time that they matched up this year. Because it, it seemed like that was a lot closer. I mean, Gianna Paul opens up the scoring in the 11th minute. McWhorter equalizes in the 34th. And it just seemed like the game was still there for Mississippi State to take. Now, in the end, outran them, outlast them. Yep. Crimson Tide scored three more in the second half. But it does. It has a different feeling, I think, with the way that Alabama continues to play, even here in the SEC tournament. They, they, they haven't given up. Every single wave of attack that Alabama have gone after Mississippi State, they put themselves in an opportunity to score. You can see, like, they are not going to take the foot off the gas. Parker perfectly slots it through to Mariana and Nest. Brad transfer has been a big part of what they've done off of the bench. Mummer. Line nicely cleared. Gongo wanted to call the game winning goal scorer from Sunday night. Knox. Paul. That's just how dangerous she is. I, she didn't even get the greatest first touch. No. He said a great ball over the top and very unfortunate putting that over the crossbar. And so here in Pensacola, we are in the quarterfinals. It's quarterfinal Tuesday. We have already had two results so far. 3-0 South Carolina taking care of the number 10 seed Ole Miss. Robert's going to get to that one. And then Georgia. 
in the upset, taking down Tennessee. That was a 6-3 upset. 2-0. Danny McGee in the 20th minute with an absolute banger. You have to go on and look, look for that one. Maybe try to watch the game back on the SEC website as well. Torrey Penn in the 34th minute to put the game away. And maybe a bit of a surprising result with how well Tennessee has played throughout the year. But it's Kadani McAlpine and the Georgia Bulldogs moving on in what should cement not only an NCAA tournament bid, but they might even be hosting at the beginning. Yeah, he's done great things at that program. A big statement bringing him into Georgia. Uh, the administration waited their time for the right person to come along, and when he was available and they were willing to invest into possibly winning a national championship, that's their goal. Um, like unbelievable facilities, and you can see it today. He's turned that program around very, very quickly. It does seem like they finally got the right fit. A Bulldogs program that has so much potential, but never really put it together that much against Steve Holman, and certainly not under Billy Lusane after he comes over from Duke being the associate head coach, and it, it seems like Kadani McAlpine might be the answer. Yeah, and a good guy as well. A really, really, really good person. And that goes just wide of Mariana and Est. Arkansas is in the house. They have been to six straight SEC tournament championship games. 0 for 6. Maybe this is the year, but again, they're matched up in this half of the bracket, which means if Alabama holds this scoreline and moves on, it's going to be an Arkansas-Alabama rematch if they can beat Vanderbilt. It's not easy. It's not easy, but it shows you the strength and the excitement of every single game in this league. Finley Crone finally pushed into action. Crone still waiting for her first save, though. Has not had to do pretty much anything. The former Oklahoma transfer in her third season with Alabama. Another one of those players that Wes Hart has got in the market and gotten, and it has worked out perfectly. Combination play with the nest. Score God just wide. Tested the goal of Mac Titus once again. I just want to, when we're talking, when we're talking about Crone, great, great transfer in. Um, and she may not have done anything with her hands or feet per se tonight, but I'll tell you what, she's going to be forced coming off the field because she's done nothing but organize. And that's a sign of a really good goalkeeper. Being able to organize, organize your back line, organize your midfield, because the last thing Alabama want to do is to give up a goal. Like, regardless, right, even if they're winning four, five, six, zero, that's, they don't want to give up a goal. They want to claim that clean sheet. She wants to walk off the field with a clean sheet, but it comes from her organization. So even though she may not be making the big saves or anything to do, that communication is huge when she's organizing that back line. If it's still zero on the board next to Mississippi State's name, it would be the ninth clean sheet for McKinley Cole this season. Nine clean sheets and 18 wins. Do that math, half of them being no goals allowed, pretty good. It just shows you why they're 10 and 0, right? It's like you're building your program, score a goal, save a goal. And you have the tools to score lots of goals. Now you've got a back line with a solid goalkeeper to keep the ball at the back of the net. And that's just your recipe for success. Here we go, here we go. Free opportunity to advance the ball from Riley Combs. And instead they go short to Simpson. Now I don't know where the breakdown in communication is there. Because I would never have went short because you're kicking the ball to somebody who is going to get immediate pressure from Gianna Paul. And you're not going to be able to play. You're better off Take your opportunity, serve the box, try and get something, fight for the scraps, and try and bring yourself back into this game with five minutes to go. Just hey, wide, yeah. wow. Crone yeah. got to it, this, and, and she was forced into action yeah, there. Yeah, that's, there's the concentration piece, right? She's done nothing for 40 odd minutes, for 40 minutes, and then all of a sudden called upon makes a great save. If you, her feet nice and sharp, gets herself down to her left hand side or to her right hand side and pushes it around the post. Sign of a great goalkeeper when she's had nothing to do. 
Mississippi State's first corner. Here's McWhirter, who has three goals in the last five games. Trying for an assist here. Alabama is so organized, though. Paul got collided with. Back in the box, and one hop into Crone. Just more than four minutes remaining in the first 45. This is the first game of two in the lower part of the bracket here in the quarterfinals. Here's Gianna Paul. Look at all of this space for Tanner. Now Molly McDougal. I imagine James Armstrong and Mississippi State just trying to keep it right here. 3-0 would certainly be a dagger, and, and he's got a lot of subs out on the pitch right now. He, he's going to be just wanting that clock to run down really quickly because you can see it in the middle of the field. Macy Hodge is, you know, she's ambling around based upon sh how much minutes she's got on her legs, and it's difficult when you've got an Alabama midfield that are just bursting full of energy. Alabama will have another corner to come. Macy Hodge and the captains on Mississippi State along with Alyssa Delois. Just trying to keep James Armstrong's team in it. Try to see out these final three minutes and change. Anna Tellish running back onto the field. So is Ashlyn Kane. I mean, we're talking about players that are coming in here. And Ashlyn Kane is now playing in her seventh game, number 33 in Maroon. She's played 88 minutes. And now you're playing the number one team in the country in the SEC tournament quarterfinals. You, you've got to learn somewhere, but that's how deep he's had to go with his bench. Unfortunately, that's what, in, what injuries does to you. That's why no matter what happens, the final result between Mississippi State and Alabama, the Bulldogs will have nothing to hang their head about the entire season, and most likely a trip to the NCAA tournament coming. Yeah, the RPI is sitting in a really good spot right now. So Right now they're number 31. Right, so he, James is going to be looking for, you know, if they go out tonight, they're going to get a week and a bit rest. Is that enough time to get some of his players back? Like winning tonight, per se, would have, again, advanced two more days, one more game. So he, they'll, they'll be looking forward to getting back to Starksville, getting rested, and preparing for the NCAAs. Like I said, hopefully getting some of those players back, like Maddie Andersons of the world, etc., um, to go and help them. You know, Olivia Buxton will be a huge, a huge impactful player in the midfield. So we're looking for those people to get back and get healthy. And we're going to have our first yellow card of the game. Corey Rockwell pulls out the caution out of his pocket. And we'll see who exactly this is on. I believe Macy Hodge. Yeah, Macy yep. Hodge. And as I said, a couple of minutes back, she's, you can see it in her legs. That's a tired foul, right? It's no, there's no malice in it. it, it it's just tired, lazy. It's, she, she, as I said, she's ambling around and... It's just the minutes on our legs, the double overtime the other night. It's been a long, long season. Um, they're just wanting that clock to run down and hopefully not concede from this free kick. Alabama with a chance to make it three. To the back post, it goes, headed by Paul. Just wide. Just off target. Reyes was in there as well. Now, Matt Titus will take her time. Yeah, if I'm her, I'm trying to waste as many seconds on that clock as possible. Get us into the locker room, take a deep breath, make our athletic training staff work their tails off to get some energy back into our legs. Double team comes right against Paul. 
Racine out for throw-in for Alabama. Less than a minute to go. Crimson Tide continues to threaten, though. Skorka couldn't keep it in bounds. And it's over the byline. Offside, actually, flag went up. And so James Armstrong is going to have something to think about once we head into the locker room. I'm not sure exactly how much he can do to rectify the situation because there's not really much to rectify at this point. It's obviously a depth issue at this point, legs issue, and you just you All know, of the above. try to go in and, and do the best you can. All of the above. He's, he, did, he came out in a formation of a, a three-back with a 3-5-2 three, to go defensively. You could drop back into that five, and they threw everything at Alabama that they quite possibly could in the first half. And you can see Alabama have quick conversations. So what's what's the team talk at, at halftime, and how are you, you know, hey, you, you can st you're still in this game at 2 nothing, and it could, but still, it could be 2-1. Yeah, I mean, obviously that effort from Haley was a great effort and, and the keeper made a good save. For us, it's all about coming out here. We know we're going to have to work a little bit harder. Um, we know that the legs might be a little tired, but that's the way it goes. So just tell them to be brave and to be honest with you, go out and enjoy it. You know, go out there and play with a smile on your face, compete, do what you've done all season. Um, and let's see if we can create some chance in the second half. James, thank you. Always appreciate the time. Thank you, Thanks, gentlemen. James. Thank you. The voice of Mississippi State head coach James Armstrong as he tries to go to his magical board and draw up a win against a team that did not lose in the SEC regular season. A perfect 10-0, the eighth team and the first one since 2016 to do it. Felicia Knox with the first offensive opportunity in the second half comes for Alabama. Tracked down by Sasha Pickard and now here is the sixth, Clem. Maggie Wadsworth, the SEC Freshman of the Year. Differences in this match, Ashlyn Sarepka in the 14th minute, and then Macy Clem had the goal in the 33rd, just poked it over the line, but more than enough to give a 2-0 advantage to the number one seed. But they wouldn't even be close to where they are, Mississippi State, that is, if it wasn't for Matt Titus. No, she's been she's been on another level over the last number of months. Uh, big, big, big saves, grown in confidence. Um, communication's been top notch. Everything you've asked of your goalkeeper, she's done it. And again, we said after the Texas A&M game, that's the reason why they're in here tonight. And again, this penalty save is the reason why it's so tight at two zeros. So. We we're hoping we're hoping that you know she's not as well, Mississippi State will be hoping that she's not as busy for the rest of the sec for the second half um, and they can put the ball in the back of net and we can open ourselves up to a, a ball game already had to make six saves just one for McKinley Crow though it was vital yeah she got down really really well to her right hand side pushing it by the post and that's that piece of she's done nothing for the whole game and then had to come out big and make that save in the game we spoke to James it should, it should have could have been two one at half time I'll play the shoulda, woulda, coulda game with you. Could also be 3 nothing, 4 nothing, 5 nothing. <laughs> like, no, no, to be fair. And because, I'm gonna get, of the, because of the PK, though. Because of the PK, but also Mac. That Titus. one just over the head of Krohn. That was a challenging effort by Alexis Gutierrez. I think the, the saves of Titus. Like, it could be that. It could be 2, 3, 4 nothing, right? So, um, she, she's come up big. She's come up big for Mississippi State so far tonight. Parker also has an assist on Sorepka's goals. So she's up to 12 goals and six assists for the SEC Offensive Player of the Year. Wearing number 10 in white, Parker, one of the captains for West Hart's team that just seems to be a little bit unstoppable, a bit like a tr uh, freight locomotive, you know? I mean, just they, they, everything that gets in their way seems to be run over. And a lot of it by her. And you can see her going again, finding that space in behind. And Sorepka pulled down in the box once again. This one is clean. Tanner had an opportunity to make it three. I think Tanner is going to be very disappointed. She's going to be wanting to get that opportunity back. You know, Sorepka, yes, gets 
a little bit physical and just inside the 18 yard box but you can see it comes from Riley looking for that com combination again yeah I, that was very close that was very close and again Riley's going to want that so when you see this ball being played in here it's actually Gwen that get, ooh, you could have a call there again I think if it was 0-0 zero, zero, there might have been a bigger shout right at 2-0 hope he's not feeling sorry right but again Riley Tanner's wanting that chance back to put the ball in the back of there here goes Wadsworth pushed out to Deloise cuts it back to the middle working on Tanner just over Gutierrez's head kept in but just as far as Alabama there's Brooks Steer in the SEC all-freshman team this season You can see now James Armstrong has has changed things around a little bit. He's encouraging his outside backs, his, out, his midfielders, to get that little bit higher. You can see like his back three are sitting as a back three because he's got to chase the game. He cannot sit deeper anymore and be so defensive. He's got to get numbers forward. And you can see they're getting at the wide areas and they're getting to serve the box. Hodge, long range effort goes wide. How about Corey Rockwell showing off some acrobatics man can still go <laughs> I, I gotta get up to get down my friend right right he'll be looking for that clip for his highlight reel i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> this year's mls assistant referee of the year that's uh in the job description that's other duties as a son <laughs> Lois to the turf. Tanner to start the offense. Never much panic for Alabama. No. Very, Especially their back four. Yeah, very calm and composed. And again, you've got you've got a Reyes, plus you got young center defenders beside us. Just they play with real maturity. Here's Rogers. Parker. Sarepka tracks down the through ball. 1v1 on Simpson. She gets a little bit higher up the pitch after they started in the three back. Knox. There's Reyes getting forward, crosses it in, and sent away by Mummer. So throw in Alabama. Look Corey Rockwell's moves here. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Well, Matrix Neo action right there. Yeah, and um, might have given him a red card for simulation. That was a bit of a dive, I bit think. Bit of a flop, right? Yeah, a bit yep. of a flop. Mm -hmm. That was inside the box, and you yep. definitely get in the card. Yep. Ian up in the booth is showing the red card. Uh, only because of a couple of you know calls he made against me back in the day and you know it would have only been a yellow to be fair you can tell Ian has such a short memory <laughs> no he's great he is great eight minutes into the second half Alabama Lady Mississippi State 2-0 and it might feel like everything's been Alabama you see that possession a moment ago is almost 70 percent for the Crimson Tide but you know Ian as well as anybody else two goals is not the most comfortable advantage that you can have out there right and that's you know something that everyone everyone says I hate that saying the 2-0 is a horrible lead it's a lead right you've got you're up to nothing just go and play but it is if, better than a one goal right if you if you concede one all of a sudden like you see mississippi state now on the break you concede one and it's, it's game on gutierrez with deloise joining the attack blocked by steer audrey sets Mississippi State had it working for just a moment. Can they regain it? There's Gutierrez again. 
to the right foot of Juliet Moore. Goes down, it's clean. Alabama can play a bit of an advantage now. Knox. Just good physical play there by the defense as Macy Hodge tackles it away. Mississippi State are giving everything right now. Everything. And they want to extend their season. And it's obvious, but I just want to see them be a little bit more composed in the final third. They're getting into those areas, but it's either a heavy touch, the ball's knocked away from them, or they're running it out of play, or there's no support, not been on the same page, but... And then we go, we talk about the keys of the game, like here we go, here's a yellow card, but we talk about the keys of the game, right? They're going to get a set piece. Now they've got to take the, this opportunity whether it be first ball, second ball, they've got to be aggressive in the box and go win this. You see, Wadsworth gets off well, and again, it is, it's, it's a blatant foul. Some might say it's a good foul, but it's in a very dangerous area, and now it gives Mississippi State the opportunity to serve. And so Raina Ray is the one that shoves her down, and Reyes picks up the yellow. In the 55th minute, perhaps a dangerous cross coming in on the free kick. Juliet Moore, the sophomore, stands over it. And that trickles out of bounds. And you can see James is over there clapping hands. Hey, come on, come on, next one, next one. But he's going to be disappointed. He's going to be disappointed with that service because it's not into a dangerous area that you can go and attack. Gwen, all Gwen Mummert could do is try and get a flick onto it to continue the momentum. It's not into an area she could attack and put it in the back of the net. Really liking this intensity from Mississippi State right now. They're, they're, they're just getting after it. Well, Vanderbilt is in the house to take on Arkansas, who they actually played just a few games ago. It is not going to be easy to take down the Razorbacks, who know how to get through the quarterfinals in the SEC tournament. I actually asked the head coach, Darren Ambrose, what the key to turning around the disappointing result against Arkansas was a few weeks ago. Oh, I think we got to focus on ourselves. I mean, Arkansas are going to do what Arkansas does, and they're going to come with everything for, for 15, 20 minutes, and uh, we just have to respond better. We, we want to we make up for the performance we had. I don't think it represented our kids and our program the way we wanted it to, so um, I think we got to come out with just the right mentality. We've got the soccer in us. Uh, we can compete. Um, we're a good team, and the goal for us is to show what this program has, has done and what we're capable of and how we've played for 90% of the year this year. Flag went up there on the run by Gutierrez. Looking forward, though, to that Vanderbilt-Arkansas matchup. Darren told me yesterday during training, it's not about redemption against the Razorbacks. It's about atonement for our performance. He thought that they just did not represent themselves well, and had they done that, would have had a great chance to come away with a result. Yeah, conceding the, the two goals early, <laughs> that's a, regardless of who it is, especially Arkansas, that's such a mountain to climb. Um, and I loved it. And you mentioned also the word like revenge, etc. And that's how they're selling it to the team. This isn't revenge. Like they watched the film. They thought they did really well in the second half. So tonight, oh, I'm, this is a game that, again, you need to tune in because it's going to be exciting. And we will have it for you after Mississippi State and Alabama wraps up. Barring a, an NCAA tournament berth, which is, I would say, if not a likelihood, a very good chance for... Mississippi State coming up with their resume, which which has some very good wins on it. I mean, they've already beaten Arkansas, Texas A&M twice, and LSU. Those are all top 50 wins, but they only have about 32 minutes and change if they are to come away and continue their season here in Pensacola. But the energy right now is the energy right now is top notch. Is that they're giving it everything, as we said. They're just chasing every single ball. They're trying to win every single tackle. Like they're hungry. And one goal, one goal will bring them back into this game, and it becomes nerves then for Alabama.
Tanner on the flank. Delois shoves her down. Corey Rockwell says play on. Now Simpson does the same. And this time it is going to be a foul on Mississippi State. We want Mississippi State to be a little bit more disciplined. That's what James is going to ask of his group, right? Be more disciplined. Don't give away these fouls because we know Alabama are dangerous. So don't give them an opportunity now to go serve the box. Knox yet to really get involved. 15 assists this season to lead the country. It's going to be a goal kick coming up for Matt Titus. And to be fair, Macy Hodge, she's living on that edge of danger right there. The great, great run into the corner. You can see that. This is something that they've worked on over and over again in practice. And Yes, you want to you want to see the ball go out over the end line, but you've got to be careful. Like Mason Hodge has to be careful. You're going up against an experienced player, any little bit of impact, and she's going to go over right and try and earn her team, her team a penalty. Ines comes in for Tanner. You can see her towards now the middle of your screen, number 13 in white, just getting the interception. Ines, the former Colorado Gatorade Player of the Year, who transferred in from Northwestern before this season, played 56 games for the Wildcats. West Hart very familiar with the Colorado area after being a club coach for years there. Sean Hudson was also over there, the LSU head coach, the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, a Division II program. And she told me earlier this season that West Hart's teams now are starting to play like his club teams did. And that is why they are having so much success, even at the SEC level. West Hart's teams are playing like West Hart's teams when West Hart was a player. And they were so successful, right? So it all comes from that. Like, you know, the, the guy is, was, had an unbelievable career in the, in the MLS. Six MLS seasons, he was the seventh overall pick in 2000. Right? So it's translate into the coaching at club level. Then he's gone and earned his stripes at Florida State. Find himself Alabama, grew this program into what it is today. And they're playing in his style. This is who this is who Alabama are, the West Hearts, Alabama. Winner takes on Arkansas or Vanderbilt. So West Hart is hoping to get to the semifinals and then a win on Thursday, he would be into the championship on Sunday. Again, Alabama won. They had never won the SEC. They did that this year in flying colors, undefeated at 10-0. They have also never won an SEC tournament. And certainly the prohibitive favorite to do just that. Now here's Delois. Moore serves the box. That was won beautifully by Steer. What about that tackle by Hodge? I literally give it everything she has. Every one of them are. Every single player out there in Maroon are giving everything for the cause. And I go back to the culture. They just want to fight, fight. It doesn't matter if you're number one or you're number 20 something on the roster. Every single one of those young women on that field out there now want to win for Mississippi State. And it's great to see. Sarepka was a little bit slow to get up, testing that right leg of hers. And it's kind of been a dichotomy for both of these teams in terms of health with Mississippi State being ravaged by injury, losing yeah. six or seven starters over the course of the season. If you're gonna be the best team in the country, a lot of that has to do with luck just as much as skill. And Riley Combs going down, hopefully, you know, she can stay on the pitch. They certainly need her to. Let's be completely honest, Alabama stayed almost completely healthy. And that's another huge reason that they've had such a good year. Um, um, we were talking about this earlier, earlier today, but every team that's successful needs to have that little bit of luck. And injury, staying injury free, is that little bit of luck also. Uh, looking at the scoreboard right now, looking at the minutes right now, like, Wes Hart has to be thinking about his bench. He's got to be thinking of getting bodies off, getting minutes off legs, etc., getting them ready for the next game. That's an important part of, you know, him getting through and his program getting through this postseason. With it only being 2-0, though, 
how dangerous is that to try to get some rest for a Riley Tanner or a Riley Parker? That That's where the 3-0 really comes into play, doesn't it? Yeah, like they have fought and fought to try and get that third goal. As you said, 2-1 brings Mississippi State back into it, but you've seen the players that he has been bringing off the bench, right? They've, he's got the depth and the quality there. You know, like you're bringing, as you said, you bring off a Parker, you're bringing on a Paul. <laughs> you, can, you could go through name after name after name, even though you're bringing off a quality player, you're, you're, you're replacing it with somebody with unbelievable talent. In Alabama in the first half, 87% of the minutes played by starters. And clearly with the game still in the balance, you see most of them in there as well. Just a few getting some breaths. Simpson flipped it back into the middle. Pickard is there. Now Reyes. One thing that makes her so special is her ability to start the offense for the right back spot. Yeah, and go go back to the piece. Like she was naturally a midfielder that has been converted into the due to the shape that Alabama play that allows her to get forward. So that attack mindset that she's got setting up the play, like she <laughs> she she can ping a ball for fun. She can connect for fun. She communicates well with the players in front of her. Like, I'm, none of us are surprised that she got Defensive SEC Player of the Year just for what she brings to this team. Reyes is just completely someone that you, you can't replicate. She's unique in her own right with her with her abilities. Her her abilities not only to defend but also to create. Now we saw Ashlyn Sarepka start things off in the 14th minute off of his feet for Parker. Yeah, I think the the build up play was unreal. Like she starts it, she gives the ball out to Parker, gets it to Hannah, plays it square, and clinical finishing to the bottom corner. She could not have placed it any better. Macy Clem, the smile on her face after she re she was told it was a goal. As we said, some goals are not pretty, right? Not going to take it away. Puts Alabama 2 nothing up. That's where we still are, though, with this game hanging in the balance. Maybe a little bit tighter than Wes Hart was hoping to. Just see in this second half. Remember, he told us when we talked to him at halftime, he said, I think we can put this thing away. Yeah, and, and with, yeah, he still got 25 minutes. And go back to my piece about making the substitutions on the bench. That's probably why these players are still on the field. And that can come back further down the road, like the next round, etc. But with, with, with tired legs. Like, he is not wanting this game to be at 2-0 right now. He's wanting it to be at that 3, at that 4 mark, so he can get those players off the field. And also, Thursday night against Auburn was very stressful. Going Didn't on. take the lead until the 87th minute when Riley Tanner put it in the back of the net. So the physical piece and the mental piece will take its toll. Right, because you're coming off of a rivalry game there in the Iron Bowl of soccer. Yeah, and we said that was probably the best performance against an Alabama by an Auburn. So it was physical. Uh, it was mentally tiring. So you, you can understand why these guys are going to be tired after yes. tonight. And certainly if Mississippi State gets through. I asked... Looking for a back post run of Paul. Well, so far, it really has been all Alabama. Pretty much what you were expecting in terms of the possession. 17 shots, eight on the goal for Alabama. Two of them finding the back of the net. Could have been three if Mac Titus didn't come up with a terrific save on Reina Reyes' PK effort in the first half. I think the most disappointing thing there right now when Wes Hart sees these stats is eight shots in goal and only two goals. Again, if you go postseason in the NCAAs, you gotta find the back of the net. And all these all these opportunities that are presented to you, you've got to you've got to find the back of the net. And if not, if not, some team are gonna catch you, go one nothing up against you, and then all of a sudden you're not gonna break them down. And that was his concern going into this game. What well, if Mississippi State scorer? That's gonna be Dallas difficult, you know? So now at two zero he need he needs he, they need one they need one more to just secure it and put it to bed. Now maybe it'll come here from Felicia Knox. Three player wall set up for Mississippi State in front of Corey Rockwell. Wait, 
Knox floats it. And yeah. in front of Reyes. Hey, if you hear Titus, <laughs> all the way, I'm organizing a wall, making sure everyone is picking up. And as that ball is floating past, past our post, shouting away, away, leave it, leave it. So hey, she hasn't given up. This Mississippi State team has not given up. They're giving it everything still. Here's Knox, real estate in front of her, tries it herself, and it pings off the post. I want to say the goalkeeper had it covered, but unfortunately I don't think she did. If that was a couple of inches more, it's probably hitting the back of the net. And to be fair, we'll see the replay of it now. You know, 50-50 ball, knocked off. That's a great shot, and you're just off the post. Mac Titus was beaten. You know, it doesn't shuffle our feet fast enough to get down to our left-hand side. Very, very, very lucky that that hit the post. Arkansas Vanderbilt coming up next. What are you looking forward to in that match? Um, hopefully a tight game. Not, not a couple of goals early on that kills it for either side. Uh, and a battle. You know, it's a battle of two different styles. You're coming look at a team that really want to play possession-based, a team that plays a little bit of possession, but when needs called, they go long. So it's going to be a battle, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think this one could, be, that could really go down to the wire. Very contrasting styles. Colby Hale, the Arkansas head coach, told us, I don't think there's a team that is more different than us stylistically than the Commodores. Yes, correct. And also... He also made part, like, and, and, and we've seen it over the last year or so. They, Arkansas, obviously, everyone, oh, long ball, knock it over the top, etc., etc. They have established themselves that they're very, very good at that. But again, now their midfield are starting to play. Like, they can control the ball, find wide spaces, serve the box, and score some really good goals with their firepower. So, yes, contrasting tactically, contrasting technically, contrast style. But, hey, this is going to be, an, it's going to be a crazy game. That will be the final team to punch their ticket to the semifinals on Thursday. Hannah Telles, the USF, USF transfer, that is. Checking in, and here in Pensacola Beach, it is gorgeous. Temperature was 75, a high floating down the Lazy River this morning. We were very fortunate to get the late games. Yeah, we were. We really were. Yes. <laughs> we, we weren't feeling sorry for, for Mike and Jill. Um, we, <laughs> well, we, they'll get to have it the rest of the, the week. The rest of the week. Doing the games when on we Thursday, home, but, the semifinals, oh. and the championship. But the weather might not be as good for them. <laughs> no, no. I looked, and I don't want to burst your bubble, but it's going to be perfect. Oh. I did not see a drop of rain for the next 10 days. Oh, hey, listen. It, it, this facility, everything about it has been, has been really, really well organized. And, even though they've organized the weather, right? So nobody can complain. Everything but Sunday was perfect. Unfortunately, they might they might be able to put in a request for weather, but I don't think they can make it themselves. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We, we might get to that point. <laughs> Pensacola has been a tremendous host, and hopefully one for years to come after so many great seasons at Orange Beach. Scorka. Look at all this room for Cat Rogers to wind up and oh. fire, and there's Titus again. That young lady has she, saved the game so many times, Sunday night and tonight. The, she she has been on another level. That that save that that that's huge. That is a huge save. And again, to to she's made some huge saves to her right hand side. Massive save right now to her left hand side. This, she, she's really shown the bench what she's good at. Flag goes up. Ian, what does it feel like to be Mac Titus right now in there? How much confidence do you have? I'll tell you what, she's probably feeling on top of the world with the saves that she's making, but it's eating her up with the goals that she's conceded. You know, like she's, she's showing you what she can do. Look, look at her feet. She moves her feet really quickly, watches the flight of the ball. Not just makes the save and lets it drop in front of her, but she's getting two strong hands on that and pushes it away over to the other side. Pushes it away from danger. Put me into Mac Titus's mind. What's going through when you see an attacking player approaching and looks like they want to take you on 1v1? What's going through your mind? What are you saying to yourself? I want to slow everything down in front of me. I'm preparing myself for the shot. My feet are consistently moving. I'm closing down that angle, my, my height off my line to make sure, again, based on my height, I want to find my comfort zone, which she obviously has. And I'm seeing the ball moving at me at a slow pace. Even though it might be traveling 100 miles an hour, 
I've got myself so composed and calm that I know I'm going to go and pull off that save. And we've seen it over and over and over again tonight. She has been a difference maker, and, and that's the reason that Mississippi State is still sniffing a, a potential result in this one, only down 2-0 as we get deeper and deeper. Here's Haley McWhorter. Feeding the middle, little shove down, no call. And now it will go against Mississippi State and Gongo. A, a, good, a, a good phase of play. Ball get played out wide, ball gets played into the box. And again, we'll see it here on the replay. That's a great ball, right? Uh, that, uh, you know, she takes it in. I think if she had held on to it, and the pressure came then and she went down. It could be a call for a penalty from the referee. But I think just but the bad control let it down and he, he's not going to call that for that. Substitutes now coming in as we take a look at the bottom half of the quarterfinal bracket with Alabama and Mississippi State fighting for a spot in the semifinals to face the winner of Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Colby Hale versus Darren Ambrose coming up when we are finished. It's slated to be an 8.30 Eastern time. In reality, it'll be a half hour after this one ends. And that is the nightcap that you do not want to miss. Arkansas was able to get a big dominant win at home. It was on a Sunday, and it was after a, a really hard-fought game for Vanderbilt. They had to go on the road to Razorback Field, and nobody wins in Fayetteville. So I think it's going to be very different come tonight. Yeah, neutral venue, right? And need, like you always thought, yeah, you want your, your your home is your castle, and this this field has been playing really really well. Uh, Vanderbilt like to keep the ball on the ground. <laughs> it's going to suit them. And this it, it's it's something that both teams are going to relish playing here in front of this huge crowd. Both teams are going to want to go and play their style of play, and at the end of the day, it could. It could possibly end up, <laughs> God, God forbid, we're going to go to penalties after two periods of overtime. But we'll see. All the fans are waiting. The Alabama fans are hoping for the first SEC tournament championship already. They saw the first regular season title, and they have come out in droves from Tuscaloosa down to Pensacola. Not only has this been a terrific host in the first year, this is also the first minutes that are ever being played on this pitch. It's brand new grass, brand new sod, and it has held up remarkably. When we got here on Sunday after the wind and the rain the night before, that was our question. How is it going to play the first teams that go and play on it? And as you can see, it doesn't even look like anybody's played in it already. And this is what, one, two, three, four, this is the fifth game on it. It's, it's played so, so well. One more to come. Ball cuts back to the left, to the feet of Gongo. Still searching for that third goal, even though Alabama leads 2-0 with 14 minutes remaining before they can punch their ticket to the semifinals if the result holds. Corner coming up for Alabama, it'll be their seventh. It's much easier when you're the top two seeds. Makes sense because you're playing the lowest seeds remaining. But 14 times the one seed is one. Seven times the two seed. Seven seed three times. It's really interesting. No times is the fifth seed one. One time the sixth, but three times has the number seven seed one. And one of those was Vanderbilt coming up in 2020. It's, it's very difficult. You know, if you're a team fighting to get that last place, you know you've got to play so many minutes and get your legs all the way through to that very last game. And then all of a sudden you're going, oh, well, that's got us in postseason into the NCAAs. And then you got another round and then it, these minutes. But, hey, nobody's going to turn around and say, I don't want to come in on the first day and go home. And nobody's going to say, I want to go in on the first day and not want to go to the final day and put a ring on the finger. So it's it's as you said it's a huge it's a huge tournament. Um, everyone around the country watches the SEC tournament. 
uh, all the young players around the country want to play in the SEC. And you recruited to it when you were the head coach of Kentucky. Exactly. Like, this is one of your selling points. Hey, by the way, come to the beach. We go to the beach every year for our tournament. And this is, like, when Orange Beach was over and there was options to go to other places, like cities were mentioned. You know, head coach is sat in that room and turned around and says, hey, we, we don't, maybe we don't want a tournament anymore because we want to be known we want to go to the beach so it's brilliant P Pensacola has been fantastic Parker's back in on the ball the SEC offensive player of the year and assist today so does Tanner have one as well on Sarepka's goal Tanner 1v1 dancing and cut out just at the last. Ashlyn Kane sending it clear from damage. If, you see, if, you see, if we see this back again, you'll see Titus comes up huge again. And this, this is similar to the save she made against Texas A&M. Like, Riley Tanner drives and drives. And you can see she picks up the ball. And when she drives at you, you know there's danger coming. She wants to get onto that left foot. Look at the angle. Look at the angle. Like, Titus closes the angle down so, so well and makes a, oh, a great foot save. Even if Mississippi State does not defeat Alabama, there is no question that, I mean, Mac Titus has played the game that she was hoping to play. And I don't think there was really much. Maybe on the second goal she could have done a little bit better, but the first goal she was just completely beaten. That, there was nothing she could have done there. Yeah, no, you're right. Nothing she could have done with that one. But it was like 18 saves so far in this tournament. Like, she has had... She, she has emerged as that player, you don't say player of the tournament, but that player that nobody knew of and has just been huge for this program. Score cut. Plays pretty much every minute, along with her center back mate, Sasha Pickard. So goal kick coming up now for Mac Titus. It is the 30th SEC Conference Tournament. We talked about Orange Beach has hosted 18 previous 17 in a row were in Orange Beach, Alabama. How about Auburn and Nashville, the only other cities to host the tournament twice. It used to be home sites at, at SEC stadiums, but hopefully has found a home here in Pensacola for years to come because not only, I mean, the hotel has a lazy river, and that's not that's not the only selling point. There are plenty of other great hotels in this area as well. The food has been outstanding. We are also in the Red Snapper capital of the world, which you found out last night. Yes, we and, did. And, and we get some incredible gifts up to the booth. One of them, uh, delicious cotton candy from Wonder Wish Creations. We've been spoiled. We really, really have been spoiled, and I'm sure the representatives from the SEC conference that are here are going to be really, really happy with everything that's, that, that's happened over the last number of days. And the following days now, it, like this is an unbelievable venue. This really, really is. And uh, I'm sure it will be back here again and again and again. And this is probably going to be the future home for many, many years. Kimley Crohn's done a lot of organizing. Not much on the ball. Just one save, but it was a massive one. It would be 2-1 if she wasn't able to get that save. But at this point, just under nine minutes remaining, and two goals for Alabama has been more than enough holding Mississippi State off of the board. Crimson Tide have scored two or more goals now in every game but one. That was the Iron Bowl win on Thursday where they only got one in the back of the net. Two goals or more every game but one since September 6th. The highest scoring team in the SEC. They averaged three goals per game. And they needed Steer to come up big there on the clearance. Tellish was threatening the goal once again of McKinley Crone. And let's see if they can make anything out of the corner. Oh, you can look over at that Mississippi State bench and they're urging their, urging their players to get after it. And so Mac Titus is going to be replaced here 
for Mississippi State, and they are going to bring in Hammond Pimentel. Try to see out the last seven minutes and 40 seconds, get her some experience. And, you know, that's a really, really nice gesture. Oh, oh. had to get right up to it. And I think a lot of Mississippi State players were thinking, well, we might have brought one back there. Yeah, for, yeah, 100%. And then clean hands, clean hands. Good great, delivery. great delivery into the box. Clean header. Wes Hart's going to be disappointed with that. But clean hands, as you said, from, from Crone. Uh, huge gesture. Huge gesture from James Armstrong. Uh, you know, Titus can get off with these minutes left. And nice little round of applause from all the fans that are here. And again, give somebody the opportunity to step in and get a little experience of playing in an SEC tournament. Paul tracking it down. 1v1 on Tania Johnson, flipped it back to the middle. Parker a whiff, and it's away by Mississippi State. I'm gonna take it a step further. What if Matty Anderson can't continue and isn't back for the NCAA tournament, and Mac Titus goes down? Then you're gonna have to put Hannah Pimentel in goal, and at least you give her an opportunity to see what it's like to be in this type of atmosphere. In a big occasion, yes, as I said, in a big occasion. And also, what happens now if Mississippi State pull one back with six minutes to go? It's game on. It's game on. So here's the thing. God forbid that happens for these guys, right? But if this young lady had to play in the NCAAs tomorrow, she's already faced the number one seed, the number one team, the number two team in the country in Alabama. So that experience is, you, you, can't, you, you can't buy it, right? So huge gesture to bring her on but maybe maybe that's what maybe that's what james armstrong is also thinking so i i, I love i love it i love giving giving her the opportunity get on the field and experience everything what the sec tournament's all about here's ashlyn kane just outside the box chance to bring one back kane good one in prone punches it away delois keeps it alive and this is going to be a foul on mississippi state that was K.K. Pavad, who was going for the spectacular and came up empty. Yeah, I, I, I don't think she meant this foul. I think he's going to call a handball here, but that was a really, really good foul. When you, when you look at Gianna Paul was on the break. All she had to do is knock it past, and she's in on goal with her pace. So to stop it, let Mississippi State get behind the ball, be organized, that's exactly what it was called for. Just more than five minutes remaining now as Alabama looks to put another sub in. This is Sydney Vincennes, the senior from Mandeville, Louisiana. And Parker will come out for the final time. Vincennes did not play last year, but has been in now all 19 games this season. Julia Moore checks in here for the final minutes for Mississippi State. There's Johnson. Rogers. Back to Aislinn Strysik. Poked on for Vincent. Has help arriving in the box now as Alabama seeks out a third. There's Reyes. Isaac. And it got through Pimentel for a moment, but luckily she held on. A nervous moment for, yes. that, for that young lady. Can you blame her? Not at all, not at all. But you talk about this in practice. Her body was behind the ball, right? So as, even though it broke through her hands, the way she had gone and anticipated the ball and fell forward onto the ball, she, her body was behind it, and that's what saved her. Pimentel coming up huge, though, on that Gianna Paul attack. Mississippi State have some really good goalkeepers. They have three quality goalkeepers. Three quality goalkeepers, and you, you can see it. Anderson is going to be over there. She's going to be, she's going to be screaming for her. Like, there's a great ball over the top, but it only took one ball for, for Gianna Paul to get in behind. And you can see, look, look how high she came out. She anticipated it. Really good foot save to put it out for a corner. But again, Titus is going to love, love seeing her making that save. Anderson's going to love seeing her making that save. And we can hear her. You can hear the communication. She's continuing to, 
organized. She's continuing to let her players know around her what's going on. So is this the is this the Cat Stratton effect? Is that what it is coming over and and? It's brought a different element, hasn't it, to your coaching staff? Like Cat's been a a, a, a fantastic player herself, um, and James Armstrong has. <laughs> You know, work the staff really, really well, but building a staff to bring in somebody of her stature and, and her like facing a, her alma mater too, right? Tonight. But look, look what look what she's bringing to the table. Like you know, really good goalkeeping coach, working really well with the goalkeeping unit that you've got here, and it's two time. nothing against the number one seed and the number two team in the country. And you've played your backup and your third string goalkeeper to keep Alabama to two goals. So I go back to the piece. This young goalkeeper is prepared every single day to be the number one. And that's that's the mindset that she needs to have. And then when she gets this opportunity, look look what she's doing. Like look at her now telling her, urging her team to, 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 to get on. It's again they're working their tails off and there's two minutes left on the clock. So we don't know come into a tournament if Mississippi State does get selected next Monday. Who's going to be in goal? It could be Matty Anderson. It could certainly be Matt Titus as well. Whoever it is, they clearly are going to have a pretty good chance of advancing past that first round. Just the way that they've played so far. Tanner's going to take this one over by the corner flag and then pass it back to safety. I don't think James Armstrong is going to worry so much about who's going to start in goal as long as they get in. And then he has a difficult decision to make because, as you said, Titus has come in and replaced Anderson. She has been on another level. Maddie Anderson, up until she got injured, was phenomenal this year. So it's not, like it's it's a it's a good bad problem to have, yes. right? So yeah, I would love to. I I, I would love to have that. Issue. Clock winds down on Mississippi State season for the moment. They will have, I'm sure, a few tenuous seconds to worry about this one, and then the focus will shift towards Monday, and they will be watching the selection show as a team in earnest, hoping to hear the Bulldogs' name called and be one of the teams selected out of the SEC. For Alabama, it's on to the quarterfinals, or rather the semifinals after they get past Mississippi State here in the quarters. And it's a job well done. It, it, it is exactly what they were hoping to do is this run towards a potential first SEC tournament championship continues. It was, it was a very professional performance. Uh, two goals, could have been more, a clean sheet. Everything that wears hearts won and a clean bill of health. No injuries moving forward. And that might be the biggest thing. Nick Zimmer